welcome to the Beyond Barriers podcast. If you're an ambitious woman who wants to dominate your career, then you are in the right place. This podcast is co-hosted by Nikki Barua, digital innovator, serial entrepreneur, author, and speaker. And Monica Marquez, ex-Googler, diversity expert, and senior corporate leader. From inspiring stories to cutting-edge strategies, you'll learn how to develop the skill set, mindset, and tool set to get future ready fast and accelerate your success. Welcome to the Beyond Bears Habits and Hacks show. Thank you for listening in. We are truly grateful for your comments, your feedback, and your advocacy. Thanks to you, we are a highly rated show and our global community is growing rapidly. If you haven't subscribed yet, tell us what we can do to earn your support. And you are, if you already have, please rate us because we love five stars. And if you've already done both, then please tell a friend about the show. In today's episode, we'll discuss the best investment you can make in your lifetime. And no, we're not talking about how to manage your finances or hot tips on the stock market. This is a different kind of investment. It has a guaranteed return. It grows exponentially over time. And it's the one investment that no one can take away from you. Now, you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, Nikki, what is this investment? (laughs) Well, it's the investment we make in ourselves. Mm, That is hands down the best investment you can ever make in your life whether it's investing time, money, or energy into bettering ourselves, mm-hmm. that is the one that has guaranteed return. It, it allows us to keep growing exponentially over time, and it has this compounding effect mm-hmm. where we just get better and better and better. And it's the one thing, literally, no one can take away from you, right? Because your 401k might disappear because right. the economy, something goes wrong, or um, you know something you invested in the stock market might go bust. Uh, you know, even the housing market might crash. But this is an investment. When you get better, there is no going back. Mm-hmm. This only going forward. I mean, there is no better ROI that is possible for you mm-hmm. because the skills that you develop, the experiences you get, the confidence and the perspective you gain. All of that is truly invaluable. And, you know, once you develop a certain level of skill, Mm -hmm. you don't actually go back. You only build upon it, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. once you get a certain kind of experience, you're never going back to being less experienced. You just gain more experience in newer things or you gain more experience at an advanced level in that same thing. Same thing with confidence. Once you get to a certain level of confidence and deep inner belief in yourself, you're not actually going back. You might feel less confident of some new things, but not in the same thing that you got. Mm -hmm. And so like there's this additive effect where everything you gain is just building and building and building and it's compounding. Mm -hmm. And it's literally what makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. But with that said, you know, it's not commonplace for most people to think about dedicating, um, you know, their, uh, their commitment to lifelong investment in themselves. Mm -hmm. In fact, for a lot of people, the last time that they really focused on this dedicated investment in themselves was probably college right? or your, Uh (laughs) you know, you know, your bachelor's, your master's degree was probably the last time that you spend like four years or a few years you know, putting in the time, putting in Mm -hmm. the energy into developing new skills. You paid the fees, you build a network, you put in the time and then you graduate, right? right? And then what happens? Then you think, okay, I'm done learning. (laughs) (laughs) I'm done. I graduated. You have Uh, all the answers. (laughs) I have all the answers. Everything I needed to learn, I got it. Now I need to focus on earning back Mm -hmm. you know, what I spend time learning. So now it's time for me to go work and make a living and pay the bills and build my family and I don't need to learn anymore. Right. Now, of course, with that said, we all know this continuing education mm-hmm. and yes, you'll go to the occasional seminar or conference or a little workshop here, or a little course there and that whatnot. But a lot of times, even when we do that, it's because it came our way, right? right. Maybe the boss <laughs> offered you a, a free ticket to a conference, or maybe you were you did well and you were um, assigned to go to a special workshop, right? A training seminar or something of that sort. So it comes our way versus being intentional right. and saying, okay, here's where I'm at. 
um, what is the next level of learning, competency, personal development, professional development that I need? Right. And how do I go, f- you know, where do I go find it? How do I go get it? You know, seeking it out with intention. Um, you know, that habit has mm-hmm. to be a lifelong habit. And, you know, it's not very common. And it's unfortunate because it's, it's the very thing that allows us to get the highest returns. Right. And one way to think about it is, you know, if you are a homeowner, Mm -hmm. on average, every year, your house is, you know, maybe uh, appreciating by, let's say, somewhere between, you know, five to 10%. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, On average, uh, in the US, that's about the rate that your house appreciates. If you got exponentially better in the course of a year Mm -hmm. and that landed you a promotion and you got a 20% raise or you landed a new job Mm -hmm. and you made 30, 40, 50% more than your last job within one year, Mm -hmm. what is a better investment? (laughs) Absolutely, (laughs) myself. I mean, even mathematically speaking, you know, if you just had to compare it to something that's a guarantee, and by the way, your house might increase five to 10% one year, but go down 20% the The next next year, year, right? right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in your case, if you get to a certain level of um, success or income or position, you're actually not going to go backwards. You know, you might go sideways and stall for a little bit, but you're not going backwards. You're only going to keep increasing or you just hold steady at that. You don't have the same risk as your house, you know, devaluing um, that you do in yourself, Mm -hmm. right? But yet on a, on a regular basis, what is the typical tendency? Are you more likely to invest in yourself? Are you more likely to invest in upgrading your kitchen or your bathroom or buying a new car, Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. If you're willing to do that, knowing that it doesn't have the same rate of return, why not upgrade yourself? When do you choose to upgrade yourself? That's an excellent question. And, and I feel it's, it's definitely something that a lot of people with corporate jobs, they struggle um, and they don't really think about it because you graduate, you get into this corporate job and then you kind of follow the path that you see everybody else following. Like, oh, you know, three years you're at this level, the next two years you're at this level. And then you kind of graduate and you become a manager, et cetera. And you kind of just take it for what it is. And instead of challenging it and saying, wait a minute, why four years here and two Mm -hmm. years here, how can I accelerate that? And so I think, or maybe if you're feeling stuck and you, you just keep going up for promotion or new opportunities and you just don't get it. Or maybe you're shopping around for jobs elsewhere and you're just not getting the big breaks you want. Maybe it's the time to pause and say, well, what do I need to do differently? Instead of saying, oh, it's a weak job market or saying, you know, my boss is not supportive of my Mm -hmm. success or what have you. What about the accountability to say, when was the last time that I really developed myself Mm -hmm. and figured out how I could get exponentially better, Mm -hmm. not just incrementally better at my job through experience, but exponentially grow in that. Yeah. And I I would say that it might even, and I'm speaking, you know, through my experience that this might be more prevalent even in minorities because there's no frame of reference to it of, you know, you, you understand college, you understand going and getting a better education. So you get a better job, but that's where it ends. You get a better job and then you work and you, you know, you, you, make ends meet, you pay your bills and you have a good life, but you don't really, you've not seen, you haven't seen what success really is in terms of just, you know, moving up, moving up, um, or accelerating it or just, you know, breaking that, breaking those boundaries of, I'm just going to follow suit what everybody else is doing. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen that as a habit and Mm -hmm. you don't see that contextually in the way, um, you know, your um, sort of people closest to you have operated and made choices, chances are it's not even crossed your mind to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, certainly like we see that, um, especially in more marginalized communities where, it, you know, the person who got into the big corporate job, maybe the first in the family, maybe mm-hmm. the one that went to college was first right. in the family. Mm-hmm. So that alone is such a huge accomplishment that the idea that that is the initial barrier that there's so many other barriers that you can cross through, right. but you have to sort of adopt that same mindset that got you through college and open up this career is the same thing that it doesn't add in college. College is actually just the first step, right? Right. That you have to keep doing that. Um, I also feel like, you know, to some degree, 
self-worth plays a role here mm-hmm. because going back to the analogy of investing in your house, mm-hmm. upgrading your kitchen, your bathroom, you know, if you owned sort of this ramshackle house that you weren't super proud of, it's what you had to deal with because it's, you know, what you have right now versus a house you're super proud of. This is your dream home. You know, it's exactly the way you wanted it. It looks how you want it to look. Which one are you more likely to put more time, energy, and money into? Mm -hmm. The one that you're proud of, right? Right. You want to, you know, you take something you're proud of. Maybe you, you know, tend to the lawn every week Mm -hmm. or your garden or, you know, you keep everything up to date versus letting things fall into disrepair. Mm -hmm. When we have things we're proud of, Mm -hmm. we put more into it. When it's something that we're not necessarily, you know, that we don't necessarily consider worthy, we -hmm. tend to ignore it. And just sort of put it by the wayside and not put more energy into it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's the same with ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, if you um, don't believe you're worthy of deserving more, of investing Mm -hmm. more time, money, and energy into yourself, you know, if that self-worth is in the way, then you will never put more into yourself. Whereas if you're already proud and confident and, you know, just really, um, have a high sense of self worth. You only want to get better, right? You know, you don't exactly. see it as a flaw or limitation. You just want to keep getting better, and so you're going to put in more into it. That's a great analogy. I mean, unless you think of a house as a valuable long term asset, you're not going to put the time and care and dollars into it. Now, who's to say you may have that small ramshackle house, but then you say, you know what? I'm going to invest the time, and I'm going to do this. And then when you see, like, wow, now yeah. it looks really great, then you start wanting to put more exactly. and more and more into it. And then next thing you know, you've turned this kind of like, you know, um, what what is that saying? I remember that movie where they bought this ramshackle house. And he's like, just a little bit of lipstick and rouge, and it'll <laughs> it'll turn into something beautiful. Yeah. You could do that where you invest that time in yourself and make it something. Yeah, and I think you break out of a great point that it's really about how we feel about something. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's not about whether you have a mansion or you have a ramshackle home. It's how you feel about it. If mm-hmm. you think it's worthy of more love, care, and tension, mm-hmm. then you will put more into it. If right. you think, oh, this is crap and I can't wait to get out of here, mm-hmm. you're not going to care. Right. You're exactly. just going to let it fall mm-hmm. into ruins until you're out of there. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we live in that place for our whole lives waiting <laughs> to get out and we never do just like we live in our bodies and our beings our whole life waiting to get better and we never do. Yeah. Well, you know, and that made me think about when I was going back, you know, people in corporate jobs, there's this misconception that, you know, you're company or your work is supposed to give you the stuff to help you develop and like give you the career development. And you never think about, no, it's my job to even invest additional dollars, my own dollars to, to help myself get better because what the company is going to give you is what they're giving everybody else. And it's those yeah, who go how above is it helping and beyond. You stand right. Out, right? How is it helping you stand out? So you've got to go above and beyond. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And especially now, you know, um, it's, change is happening so rapidly that um, it's um, you can't think of it as an employer responsibility to right. guide you, coach you, train you, upskill you, reskill you. You just can't because it's not possible for them to cover those gaps. What is easier for companies to do is to bring on people that already have mm-hmm. the skills that they need versus waiting to, you know, sort of, or having the resources and time to upgrade, you know, everybody that they have. So Mm -hmm. it's, you know, the ultimate job security isn't being good at your job today. The ultimate job security is being highly qualified and capable for doing your job tomorrow. Mm, And that Mm -hmm. is on you. Right. You know, that is on you to be prepared for that. It is nobody else's responsibility. You have to figure out how you qualify yourself for that Mm -hmm. and prepare yourself at all times with it because you know, you have to anticipate what's coming. You have to mm-hmm. think about what you have, what you lack, and then you got to go get the skills for it because, um, you know, just that mindset of lifelong learning mm-hmm. is going to get you further ahead than you imagine, you know? Um, and that's frankly a pattern that I discovered after studying so many successful people. The most common theme over and over again, hands down, was that these were all people that are lifelong learners who keep investing in themselves. And 
you know, that sense of Mm self-worth becomes very clear because they believe they're so valuable that they want to put more into themselves, right? right? And they will say that their success is the result of that self-investment. And, you know, the easiest way, if you aspire to be successful, the easiest way to be successful is find the people who you want to be like, do what they do. Right. Don't look at what they have. Mm-hmm. Look at what got them there, right? It's easier to look at what they have and say, oh, I want to be like this person because they are a C-suite executive or they have a million dollar paycheck or they have this fancy mm-hmm. home and a fancy car and all, all of this power and influence. That's what they have. But you have to look at what got them there. Right. What is it that they do on a daily basis? What are their habits? What are their values? What do they prioritize? And when you find out what it is that they do that got them to that place, then do exactly that because it'll get you what they have ultimately, or at least get you pretty close to it. Mm -hmm. But that's the secret. So if one of the most common themes is that they're all lifelong learners, Mm -hmm. they're all constantly developing themselves, then isn't that one of the most fundamental things to do for anyone ambitious that aspires to success is just do that. Yes. I mean, absolutely. I mean, over the years, as I gained more proximity to really successful people, that became abundantly clear that they continue to upskill themselves and uplevel themselves and learn and study and do all kinds of things to stay ahead of the game, which is so different from where I grew up because we had this, you know, perceived notion that you go to college, you go to school and you get your job and then you become successful. And you, and because I didn't have that frame of reference of seeing what else happens after that, Mm -hmm. you, you know, there was this kind of, you know, you think, oh, that's the end. I hit that end goal. I crossed the finish line and boom. I'm successful. But you realize as you start getting, you know, proximate to all of these successful people is that the learning never ends. And in order to stay successful, you've got to continuously learn. And that wasn't something that I knew when I started off really young. I thought there was this finish line and I got my degrees and boom, that was it. And um, absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, that was a hundred percent the revelation for me as well, because, um, you know, I had, I graduated with three master's degrees and I thought, oh, I have more education than I'll ever need. I have more education than, you know, than the average. I'm all set for life. Um, until I got to know extremely successful people. And it was eye opening for me to realize, wow, at the end of the day, they're just perpetual students. Mm -hmm. They never stop learning. They read a lot. They have coaches, they go to um, seminars, they, you know, are constantly looking at ways to develop themselves. They um, welcome feedback on a daily basis to say, what can I do better? Like, Mm -hmm. how do I constantly self-improve? That that was eye-opening to me to think that not only are they perpetually growing in sort of more formal disciplines, if you will, Mm -hmm. like developing new skills and competencies, but also informally in their um, personalities, Mm -hmm. in their presence, learning new languages or learning to public speak or becoming better writers, becoming better leaders. It's constant. And it's intentional Mm -hmm. and it's done with guidance. It's not just let me read a book and hope to get better. It's done pretty much like formal education. There's a curriculum, Mm -hmm. there's a timeline, there's a teacher, Mm -hmm. and there's an end goal. And then there's growth coming from it. So Mm -hmm. that was fascinating to me that um, even for me, much like you, I kind of... had just assumed that at the end of all my formal academic education mm-hmm. was the end of my formal learning process. Right. And it was only 10 years later uh, when I gained proximity to a whole different environment mm-hmm. that I realized, whoa, this is what it really takes. This right. is why they keep going ahead because everybody else stopped learning. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, in this day and age, it's even more important because skills are becoming outdated 12 to 18 months, right. which means it doesn't matter what you learned or what you're an expert in, you know, mm-hmm. you're um, basically becoming outdated and right. irrelevant as we speak. So the thing to look at, and I would challenge everybody that's listening to this right now, is that look at your calendar for the week. 
and account for the amount of time you dedicated to your professional development, mm-hmm. your self-development, whether that's working with a coach, whether that's taking an actual uh, formal training course, mm-hmm. um, whether it's developing a new skill, um, is it at least 5 to 10% of your total time of the week? Mm-hmm. And if it's not, you're actively getting left behind. Yes. Um, because things are moving too fast and no employer, no government, nor college or university is responsible for your growth other than you. Absolutely. And, and I, you know what? That is why I'm so proud of our accelerator program cohort. Every single one of them invested in themselves. They enrolled in the program, they dedicated themselves and they did the hard work and then they successfully graduated. And then, you know, they re- through this program, they broke through barriers and they've truly accelerated their results. Um, and so they, they did exactly what we're talking about. They invested time on and themselves. And these are all like working professionals Absolutely. that aren't like straight out of college. Right. I mean, these are all successful leaders that right. went through a very rigorous six-week mm-hmm. accelerator. And they put in that 10, so 15% much. extra time in yeah. themselves after a day's work. Yeah, I mean, it, it was honestly uh, just such an honor seeing them go through this journey week after week because on top of having uh, responsibilities, um, you know, professionally and personally and in the midst of COVID and all of everything else going on, mm-hmm. they played full out. They showed up um, prepared every single time. Um, they gave... Um, they're all to it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they kept up with, with, you know, even though it was a very emotionally intense and demanding program, like Mm -hmm. nobody gave up. And, um, you know, they dug deep and came through on the other side. And it was just absolutely awe-inspiring watching that journey, Mm -hmm. you know, and and seeing how committed they are to self-development, how committed they are to their own growth and how willing they are to invest um, in themselves. And um, that's why, uh, you know, what was also fascinating was asking them, what is the one word that would describe your experience? And Mm -hmm. they all said the same thing. And the word was transformative. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And you can see it. That was exciting. You can totally see well, you the You can see them transforming from week to week to week. It right. was amazing. I mean, these are not the same individuals um, who started the program that were graduating the program. I mean, just in six weeks, the mm-hmm. transformation that came through was absolutely awe-inspiring. So I'm super excited that, you know, this coming week we're spotlighting our graduates and uh, sharing their stories because they are such an inspiration to people everywhere that think, oh, I don't have enough time. I don't need more education or um, I don't have any more energy Mm -hmm. to put in. These are all individuals that had so much going on in their personal lives and had so much responsibility and so much stress personally Mm -hmm. that they were carrying and never compromised their commitment. I mean, they just went through it and um, were just shining stars. So, um, if you uh, are listening to this and follow us on social media, please take a moment to congratulate our, uh, our graduates on their transformation. They are so deserving of it. Yes, they absolutely are. So that's the lesson for everyone. Um, who you are today doesn't define who you can be tomorrow. You can get anywhere you want, achieve anything that you desire. All you have to do is make yourself the best investment. So go out there and bet on yourself. You are absolutely worth it. Visit IamBeyondBarriers.com where you will find show notes and links to all of the resources in this episode. Thanks for listening. There are thousands of podcasts out there and we are so grateful that you've chosen to listen to ours. Visit IamBeyondBarriers.com where you'll find show notes and links to all the resources referenced in this episode. And be sure to take the quiz on the website. Your score will tell you where you are, what helps you gain momentum, and what holds you back. You'll also get a free guide with cutting edge career strategies. We'd also love to hear from you. Share your comments and topic suggestions on IamBeyondBarriers.com and we'll be sure to address them in future episodes. If you enjoyed our show today, please subscribe and rate the podcast or just tell a friend about it. See you next episode.